Welcome to this uh, short video that's going to cover a, a short summary of the book A Course in Miracles. I'll be using mainly one diagram found in the appendix of my first book, Healing the Cause, to give an overview of this thought system, both its metaphysical teachings and its practical teachings of forgiveness. The chart's in three parts. The top part covers the metaphysics of the course. The second part deals with the seeming separation when we thought we left God. And the last part deals with where we are here as a body and uh, the lessons of forgiveness to awaken us from this dream of separation. Looking at the uh, first part, the metaphysics, Metaphysics means beyond physics. It's looking at what's true and what's illusion. In the Course it says that what we believe is true is illusion and what we think is illusion is actually true. There's a quote from the Course that illustrates this. You may be surprised to hear how very dif different is reality from what you see. That's from chapter 18 in the text, uh, section 1, paragraph 5. The Course is an example of a, a non-dual teaching. Non-dual means not two. In this world we think of love and its opposite, or seeming opposite, fear. That's dualistic. Uh, but actually there's only love, and its absence is fear. That's non-dual. Another example would be light and dark. Uh, they seem opposites, but actually in a non-dual system, only light is real and its absence is darkness. After all, you can bring a, a lamp into a dark room and it lights up, and the darkness doesn't go under the carpet or hide behind the curtain because it's not actually real. But you can't bring a lamp of darkness into a light room and make it go dark because darkness isn't real. The course is actually summed up in a couple of lines on the first page. The first line is nothing real can be threatened and then nothing unreal exists and herein lies the peace of God. Nothing real can be threatened to referring to what who we really are, what God made. If we look at uh, God on the chart here, it's described as limitless, and formless, eternal and changeless. If you imagine God as an eternal light bulb that never been switched on and can't be switched off, it shines and that shining is its creation, the Christ. And so we are like the Creator. That cannot be threatened. We're outside of time. We're perfect. What we have miscreated can be threatened. Anything that's born will die. If we look at our universe, everything in it was born, came from the Big Bang. Our solar system is middle-aged. In five billion years there would be no life on any of the planets. Even the beautiful things on this earth, a beautiful sunrise or flower, only last for a short time. What God created can't die, and that's who we really are. And the aim of the Course through the practice of forgiveness is to discover that. So how do we move from heaven to this world of separation? We'll take the three-part diagram again and simplify it down. Heaven, this is where there's God and Christ. A perfect oneness we can't really understand. The Course says into eternity where all is one, there crept a, a tiny mad idea at which we remembered not to laugh. That idea was could there be something better than unity, or something better than heaven? What if we were God? What if we could be separate, do our own thing? And this sounded very appealing. 
and we have the power of God in us and in that moment we created it and simultaneously a, a great fear and guilt came over us of what we'd done we wanted separation but it came with such a price now the good news it never really happened this is what the Course means by accepting the atonement we're still asleep in heaven dreaming of all this but it seemed very real to us when the split happened the mind shattered into three parts the ego which is this thought that separation has happened and it's real and it's a great idea we can play God now but we took with us the memory of God the Holy Spirit that's the definition of my own teacher Kenneth Watt gives to the light of God in our mind this part of the mind is known as the right mind and the ego is the wrong mind and then we're left with the decision maker or the sleeping son of God every moment the sleeping son of God will listen either to the ego saying well it actually happened we did it we broke away from that God we knocked him off his throne and took his power and yes he's upset and he is after us and you see plenty of reference to that in the Old Testament while the Holy Spirit smiles and said nothing happened you fell asleep that's the only way you could dream of separation and if you turn to me in your mind and if you learn my lessons of forgiveness which we'll look at in a moment I'll wake you up from this dream and to your great delight you realize nothing has happened it'd be like last night when you were in your sleep and having a very powerful nightmare and perhaps you'd kill someone and you felt terrible and guilty and then you woke up in the morning and you smile and say my goodness nothing ever happened it seemed so real but of course yes you didn't wake up this morning because you want separation you want to play with that then you must dream and so we dream 24 hours a day and we carry with us this terrible guilt and pain of killing God we think and stolen his power we've got to get away from him now we've got to get out of our minds and we literally projected a, a physical universe where we could hide and simultaneously play our game of separation and a veil of, forgive, of forgetfulness happened at that point and we return to the early diagram here's this veil of forgetfulness we've just forgotten all of this ever happened because we can't bear to remember it now we think we're bodies with a brain that thinks but the course says the brain doesn't even think it just takes the thoughts from the split mind and then these govern the body the body is like a puppet and its strings are pulled there's actually no life in the body it's actually controlled and energized by the split mind either by ego thoughts of denial and separation and projection or the thoughts of the Holy Spirit of forgiveness the Course reminds us you dwell not here but in eternity you travel but you travel but in dreams while safe at home this realization is what awakes us when we learn forgiveness until then the ego has found a home in the body it believes in pleasure and pain it has decisions to make here death seems very real and therefore fear accompanies us on our journey and we're ruled by perception we think, like in our nightmares, there is a real world out there. And in this state of time and space and separation, we enter into relationships. And of course, there's, there's two types of ego relationships, special hate and special love relationships. In special hate, anything that upsets us, we deny the causes in our own mind and the ultimate causes we think we separated and we project it out 
onto the world, onto the weather, onto governments, onto people. They're the ones that fought, not us. They're the ones that need to change for us to be at peace. Also, though we don't understand it, we feel lonely. We feel we're not at home, really. And there's a bottomless pit in us. And we try to cover that up by special love relationships. These are needy, dependent relationships. And they can be with substances, alcohol, drugs, food, chocolate, cigarettes, surfing the internet, pornography. Or we might choose a person, a lover, a parent, a child. And we develop a needy, dependent relationship with them special love relationship. Actually it's a substitute for our relationship with God, though that's not in our awareness. So without the help of the Holy Spirit in our mind, we would actually be stuck here. But we can't completely forget God. The Course says that tolerance for pain is high but it's not without limits. In the end, everyone will seek a better way. This is when the tide starts to turn. And instead of trying to do everything ourselves, which is the way the ego thinks, because he thinks there's no help, other than his own counsel, and the Course says you must realize there is something about the ego that every time you actually achieve its aim, whatever it might be, like shiny new car. Happiness is very short lived. And then it says, ah, oh, but I have another goal for you. Let's go here. And so life after life is spent trying to find happiness outside ourselves. Of course, there's only people looking for happiness outside themselves come here. Eventually we get tired of this game. Waiting for us now in our right mind is the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, and that will teach us forgiveness. Forgiveness is stopping judgment, stopping criticism. Realize the problem is our mind, is in our mind, and that's where healing lies. Forgiveness can be explained in a number of ways. Of course, in one section talks about the three stages of forgiveness. <clears throat> the first stage is you realize that what's upsetting you in the world is actually in your own mind. Otherwise you'd have compassion for other people's behaviors when they're um, living in some negative way, some dictator, some serial killer. Of course it's difficult for us to look inside and see that there's a Saddam Hussein or a Hitler there, but unless we have compassion for these people then it means we have elements of them inside us. We hate to see this so we deny and project them out. In the first stage we have to reach a decision like I'm only upset because I'm carrying this inside my own mind. And a real sign of completing the first stage is that you actually feel grateful for the person who showed you what's unhealed in your own mind. You feel grateful for Saddam. Thank you, Saddam, for showing me that there's a dictator in me. I see this with my children at times, or if I'm an employer, I, I might be a dictator over my employees. Or someone who is weak and unempowered, I might try and gain my wishes over them. This takes us to the second stage of forgiveness. Well, we must make a decision to let what we found go. This may seem a little strange, but we may have become reliant on perhaps our jealousy. Maybe it's gluing our relationship together. Maybe your partner mistakes your jealousy uh, for love. And if you let jealousy go, they might leave you to find another jealous person. Or the needy dependent relationship that you're in. You see the part you're playing. Perhaps you're a rescuer. You need to be needed. 
And you see that's an attack upon people. It's not true healing. So you decide to let that go. But your partner or your friends who are victims won't like this at all. They're still coming to you to be rescued, but you no longer do it. And they perhaps then will leave you to find some other rescuer. And now you have perhaps no friends and no partner. Part of you knows that if you let this go, your life will change and it will affect others around you. This second stage could be harder than the first to really say, I don't need this anger, this hatred, this jealousy anymore. And if it affects my life, um, perhaps if I let my fear go, my boss won't like it because I'm afraid of my boss. And if I stop being afraid of my boss, I may not get promotion. When you reach the end of the second stage, you know you must let this go, no matter what's going to happen in your life. And that's the signal to the third automatic and divine stage of forgiveness. The Holy Spirit just takes the pain from you. You've been holding it so close so long, and now you say, I don't need it, and it's lifted from you. And that's when you feel the peace. So what is our life? It's a, a daily classroom of forgiveness. Anything that makes you angry or upset you is a, a red flag calling for forgiveness. To realize you created it, and secondly, you can let it go, and then it's taken from you. The journey of the course is from the nightmares of the ego's thought system to the happy dreams of forgiveness, where you find peace and joy in your life. Until with enough forgiveness practice, you enter the real world while you're still in this body. And that's the reflection of heaven on earth. There you feel a oneness with everything. You would not attack another. It would be like stamping on your own foot. The uh, great teacher Nisigadatta Maharaj once said about himself, which describes this real world. When I look within, I see that I am nothing, and that is wisdom. And when I look without, I see that I'm everyone, and that is love. And between these two, my life turns. He realizes nothing because his ego has gone. There's only the ego that says you're something. But at the same time, you see you're one with everything, and that's the great oneness. And there you live your life. So, thank you for staying with me, if you have, this far, on the uh, summary of the course. If you want to delve deeper, I would recommend the books by my own teacher, Dr. Kenneth Watnick. And as you can see, I have three books there available on my website. I've also produced audios of healing exercises where you can practice forgiveness. So, I wish you well uh, on this uh, daily classroom of forgiveness. Thank you.